Thank you very much. Um, my name is Chris Venerini. Uh, I am a senior uh, engineering manager for UPMC Enterprises, which is a division of UPMC. Um, we also just like to call it UPMC, I'm sorry, Enterprises, instead of just saying UPMC Enterprises. Um, so UPMC generally is a $16 billion um, multi-integrated delivery network where we actually have both a um, two, different, two strong divisions of UPMCs, one being the provider network, another one being the insurance uh, network. And generally, uh, who here in, uh, works in healthcare? Anyone? Nobody. OK. Oh, one in the back. So one person knows just as well as I do that technology in healthcare is hard. And that's the prologue to my story, is building this identity management for these different silos of uh, integration that we had to do. So again, work for UPMC Enterprises, $16 billion uh, global integrated delivery network and finance system. Uh, it's essentially a very large nonprofit health enterprise. And within this healthcare system and within healthcare in general, I like to say that healthcare has a multiple persona disorder. So I'm Chris Venturini, but I'm also a payer. I'm also a PCP patient. I'm a sleep patient, I'm a consumer, I'm a radiology patient, and I'm a potential customer. And it just snowballs from there. I am, I am, and I am, I am, I am. And again, the continuation of these different personas. And the struggle also within healthcare generally is, is every single one of these personas also have a very highly specialized system that is used to be able to facilitate the needs of that individual persona. And generally, the personas are similar, but they're also different. Uh, as a parent in healthcare, um, not only am I a patient, I'm also a payer, and then I also have a dependent on my insurance, and I also have a proxy and by the way, proxy actually just means is I am a authorized representative on behalf of somebody. I'm a proxy for my, metal, my child's medical records. And by the way, those are in different systems. They also have different regulatory requirements. And they also have different um, workflows that the individual uh, silos of the organizations or the different lines of businesses actually have to go through. And to be able to identify you as an individual, as a person across the entire organization, there's a heavy reliance on fuzzy matching, um, referred to as master data management or a master patient or person index. And uh, by any other name, it, wouldn't, it would smell just as putrid, but it's a necessity. Um, so the way this works is, imagine if you had two different pieces of paper and they had the registration, uh, it was basically registration forms that you had to fill out as a patient. How do you identify that they're the same person on both of these forms? M one might be missing a middle name, another one might be uh, having a different phone number, another one where the social security number might be having one digit that was smudged. Um, what you would do is, is you would compare them, right? You would actually say, ah, they're pretty similar. And if you were confident enough, you would say they are the same person. And that's generally the same thing that these systems do, is, is they look at the demographics associated with these personas, and they actually say, how similar are they? Ah, they look pretty similar, so I'm going to associate them. In healthcare, again, health, healthcare technology is hard. A user equals the patient equals the person. And I, being a Steelers fan, sorry, um, am, I'm associated also to a medical record. So I have a user of Steelers Fan 7, and I'm a medical patient. And that basically ties back into me as the individual. But what happens if I get these association wrong? I work in a very risk adverse industry where there's a lot of concern about if you get this wrong, what happens? You're going to get a lawsuit. People can potentially die, God for, uh, forbidden. 
so it's those kind of high risk adversity uh, things that we have to get through to be able to work in healthcare. Chapter one, this scares the hell out of me, but I like a challenge. Uh, stop me if you've heard this before. I get called into the CTO's office and he says, I just promised the president that, dot, dot, dot. And he basically said that we wanted to be able to build uh, a centralized identity management for our healthcare organization where the consumer would only ever have to log in once and for it to be used across a myriad of different solutions for the organization. So my response scares the hell out of me, but I like a challenge. We wanted to work in four different problem spaces, and three are actually pretty common within identity management. Attestation, authentication, and authorization are those three. Attestation is basically confirming that the person on the other side of the wire across the internet is that same person that they claim to be according to the data. Authentication is being able to give them system access. Authorization is once they're in the system, what do they have access to be able to do? So you can kind of think of authentication as the key to the front door. Once you're in the building, authorization is more of what rooms in that building do I have access to? But the fourth one's the unique one. It's persona alignment. And that's being able to say, not only am I Chris the individual, but I'm also, uh, sorry, not only am I Chris the user, but I'm also Chris the payer, Chris the uh, PCP patient, the radiology patient, to be able to do this crosswalk across the entire organization. And what it really comes down to is your persona equals your authorization. Given the, 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 exact, the, the same example that I was given earlier, given that I'm a patient, when I log into the portal, I should see my child's records. As a payer, you have a dependent, and that's stored in a mainframe. As a patient, I'm a proxy or an authorized representative for my child, and that's stored in the EMR. The primary challenge that I had to solve is, is how do we create a centralized identity system that allows different lines of businesses to maintain their individual nuances, requirements, and systems? Is this even possible? Planning the impossible, chapter two, the discovery and the evaluation of what we had to do. We evaluated four approaches. One persona to roll them all, essentially consolidate it down to one centralized store of all the personas, a federated network of personas, or real-time resolution of a persona. So going with this first one that we evaluated, one persona to roll them all, the challenges that we discovered around that is it's difficult to maintain the business policies and the conflicts. So, you know, I'm not gonna read the exact same example again, but what do you do if one of the data elements is missing? Do you, do you stop the, the application? Do you make, or do you allow the application to make their own decisions? So if I'm a proxy, and, but, I, but my, um, my dependence not on my insurance information, do I allow them to perform the action anyway? Especially in modern frameworks like OAuth and OpenID, uh, OpenID Connect, Part of the challenge is, is there's kind of like this implicit trust, right? So you're gonna be able to give the data to the consuming application, and then they kind of have to interpret it based off of those authorizations of what they're gonna do with that data. You can't, you can't really, I mean, Identity Server with WSO2 does have a policy management, but it's still up to them to be able to query that policy and confirm that the data is accurate and they are able to perform this action. Um, so really the question does, with a one policy to roll, or one persona, sorry, to roll them all, how do you enforce the integrity of the business policy? You really, it's really a struggle there. Also, you can have a lot of problematic data problems where a lot of the systems, as you scale up, you're gonna have this big pool of data that's gonna be coming in, and the indexes are gonna have to be maintained. You're basically gonna be generating this huge reporting data, uh, database that's not really gonna be real-time efficient and uh, a real struggle as you continue to scale. 
And in the modern web frameworks, you want to try to be as nimble and agile as possible. So if you start sending around these different data elements that in, in a very large format to be able to do authorization claims, it's really going to slow down the, the system and actually become unwieldy. So then we talked about maintaining siloed personas. Well, what you get to do is you actually do maintain the policies. Uh, it also allows the different organizational workflows to maintain uh, their own needs. And it allows continued use of their systems. But whenever you have these siloed personas, do you again, do you store them in one centralized spot? Or do you start building this federated network of these different identity providers that all are federated to each other? Again, you have scalability issues with this. Is as you continue to have these different personas, how do you scale up in such a way that it's easily, easily to be maintained? Or do you fetch them in real time? So the clinical app would talk to the identity provider, which then would understand the clinical, the clinical context and to be able to get that into the clinical system or retrieve it from the clinical system, that is. But traditionally, the identity provider, outside of a federated understanding of these different authentications, is, is it only really has a concept of you as a user singularly. So the identity provider would actually have to understand the context of the clinical app coming in to understand that it has to fetch this other persona in a downstream system and to provide it back. So the task, again, how do we create this centralized system? The fact of the matter is, is we didn't. We actually, I didn't allow my team and, and myself to get caught up in the concept of a centralized system. We, everything else essentially was still distributed. What we did is we actually just built a centralized aggregation point to be able to facilitate the need of these different personas across the organization. So the path chosen was real-time resolution of the persona based off the context of the incoming user. The reason that we did this is, again, rehashing some of the earlier points, is it allows for the different lines of businesses to continue to have their ownership, maintains the policies, allows for current operational workflows, allows for the continued use of their systems, and it scales. So, chapter three, building the impossible. So I'm a big fan of domain-driven design, and I know that domain-driven design is kind of what helped facilitate the conversations around uh, microservices. But we, bro we broke down this platform that we built into four different key components. The identity provider, which is why I'm here, uh, pres uh, provisioning, persona alignment, and then persona retrieval. Identity provider, so we chose WSO2. Um, we're really looking for the, it to be able to use a con all the common authorization and authentication protocols and frameworks, also to be able to customize the, the UI however we wanted, um, and also to have a strong development support, and also to be able to customize the, the data of how we would want to store it ourselves. Provisioning. We had to understand, we understood actually, that whenever we had a user that would come into our system, that just because the persona doesn't exist doesn't mean it shouldn't or it doesn't need to. So what we did is we had a provisioning service that we built homegrown to be able to react to the users that are coming into WSO2 and then to provision them in our downstream systems. Uh, for example, Cerner, which is one of the different EMRs that we use at UPMC, we actually use both Epic and Cerner. That's a whole other story. But uh, with Cerner, whenever we had a SAML federation between the systems, it still needed to be able to do a translation of the incoming user to its patient. So we actually had to fill out a table, which is basically nothing more than a join table of saying user X is associated to patient Y. Persona alignment, getting back to the MDM or the MPI solutions. Um, it's being able to identify those personas across the organization 
uh, and to be able to not only associate them, but also provide the context of the ID that's associated to that patient as well to help locate them. And then finally, persona retrieval. Within the life cycle of the authentication of the user, to be able to fetch that information based off of the context of the authenticated user to be able to identify them as a, either a patient, as a insurance member, as a child, things of that nature, all in real time. Chapter four, it's alive. Actual workflows on what we did. So this is the user creation workflow. Uh, I'm gonna try to take it from a little bit more of the same per per perspective of me being a parent. So the app launches our registration system. So I'm a parent and I want to be able to make an appointment for my child. Um, so the app goes to our registration UI and the consumer fills out their information. Uh, and by the way, the, the app also provides the client ID that's associated to the app to be able to identify the context or the line of business for that app. Once that the information is entered in the UI, WSO2, well, the identity server, actually generates that user, and then we actually created custom code within that platform to be able then to hit our downstream provisioner and then to, under, uh, to provision them in the clinical system and, and also in the MPI or the MDM solution. So again, I being a parent, I have a child that's in the clinical system. Um, I'm also the patient in the clinical system, but I also may just have a medical record. I don't have a user associated with me yet. So that's what the outbound provisioner does, is it actually understands that concept and that, that persona, if you will, is saying, oh, this person's coming from a clinical app, we now need to provision them not only as a, a patient into that system, we also need to provision them as a user, and then we also need to be able to send that data to our MPI solution for it to be associated across the organization. So really into the meat of the situation, the user authentication workflow. Authentication, so the application this is very similar to what you see today with um, social federations, whenever you want to use your login or your, um, your, your login for Facebook or um, LinkedIn or Microsoft, things of that nature. So the app is going to launch our authentication UI where WSO2 is going to authenticate the user and, and verify that they are authorized into that system. But then WSO2 actually reaches out to our claims we, what we refer to as our claims augmentation service. Now, with the, the, the common scenarios in modern authentication protocols, claims are basically entitlements that basically are um, in, entitlements that basically say um, who I am, what, what I can do, and things of that nature. And so WSO2 reaches out to the claims augmentation server, our service, and actually says, hey, I got Chris Venerini here, I also need to be able to get their personas from these downstream, downstream systems. So the claims augmentation server basically goes to WSO2 and says, I got this, just give me the information, I'll send you back to the persona that you need for this context. So the claims augmentation service reaches out to EMPI saying, hey, uh, MPI, I got Chris Venerini here, I need all the different identifiers for the, the, the clinical system to be able to uh, be able to, to facilitate the need of getting this persona back. And the MPI, or the MPI is gonna come back and says, yep, I got their identifier, their MRNs, one, two, three. And then the claims augmentation system's going to go into that very specific uh, system or the medical system and to be able to say, okay, I have user one, two, three here. I need that additional profile to be able to send back to the consuming application. So it queries the data, the data comes back, the claims augmentation system then takes that and sends it back to WSO2 where we have code there that basically takes the, the assertions for that user or the entitlements for that user and adds it back into the payload that's sent back to the consuming application. And then that application can then make its decisions that it needs to based off of that context. And what this allows for is what I really, what we really tried to facilitate and build 
it from the very beginning, taking multiple apps. So in our case, if I'm a patient or a, a insurance member, I may have two different apps, but because we take the context of that app and identify you across the entire organization from your different personas, I'm actually in real time able to facilitate the, the conversation of what is the context, what do I need, and to be able to you have that consumer authenticate once and for, that, for all the different apps to then have their own needs uh, within that particular line of business. The payoff, mission complete. So again, getting back to the original point that we were trying to make, a user equals the patient equals the person. And again, in healthcare, what we really have to keep in mind is the cost of failure is high. So this association needs to happen flawlessly. And not only does it need to happen flawlessly, we also need to make sure that we don't burden the consumer, which we are today of being able to authenticate multiple times and having to store username and passwords individually. So with this system, we are able to take a user that equals the patient, that equals the person, and actually build it in such a way where it's now a user equals the patient, the radiology patient, the payer, the customer, the lab patient, and it continues back to the person. And not only is it a user, but it's the user. So it's not just I have a user that's a radiology patient that's tied to me as a person. I have the user that can understand all these different personas in the setting and to be able to authenticate once. Thank you. And if you're interested, please keep in touch. There's a QR code to be able to get to my uh, About Me page. Any questions? Um, interestingly enough, um, we looked at, this was actually facilitated by our own um, operations needs, but usually if there's a Microsoft logo, they love it. So we also looked at Microsoft as Azure AD as one of the big thing. We also looked at Ping. We looked at um, ThinkTexture, which is a .NET shop that actually they build uh, a competitor to that as well.